Welcome students, Tom Harmer, your accounting professor here, and this will be a demonstration of how to do journal entries in QuickBooks. So, here we are in our home page of QuickBooks, and we are going to also load up instructions, our O5X QuickBooks instructions make journal entry. That's uh, available in your online site there. Bring that up and then we'll tab between it and our QuickBooks program back and forth because I have all the instructions here in narrative form with screenshots. So we come back here and the first thing we're going to do is to we're going to go to the plus sign in the up center of the home screen, click on that, and it gives us a choice of a few items here, but we can click on show more. Okay, and there we go, show more gives us all kinds of data input options. We're coming over here to the other column, down to journal entry, click on that, and we are now in our journal entry form. So let's flip back to our instruction forms. Alt, hold down my Alt key, touch on the tab, it jumps over to that screen, I let go. There we go. Journal entries, use the journal entries form to enter cash deposits, accounts payable and accounts receivable transactions, and capital contributions. We don't use it for entering checks. That is a different journal of entry. This is a general journal we're talking about now. We will be instructing you on how to go through the cash disbursements journal, which is called checks, to enter checks. So here we are to do journal entries. So we've already gone through these first couple instructions here, and we end up down here at our narrative on making a journal entry, and I have arrows and whatnot, so, but I'm going to demonstrate all of this to you right now. So Alt-Tab, back to our QuickBooks screen, hit Alt-Tab, okay, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enter our journal date, whatever it may be. QuickBooks Sullivan project is dealing with June 2012 initially, so 11 13 so you can enter your date that way. Or you can come over here and you can click on this and enter it this way. Either way is fine. I think that former one was a little bit quicker. Then we enter the tab key. It goes next over here to the journal number. And as you know, our journal instructions in QuickBooks tell you that we want to have that posting reference ID, JE1, JE2, JE3, with each transaction. Okay, so I'm putting this in here as a sample, JE4 tab. I don't use my cursor to get around except to get in my first field and I use my tab key after that pretty much all the time. So I'm going to just make up a, a journal entry here. Uh, let's say that we went to uh, Office Max and we purchased some office supplies. So I know office supplies is 115. That'll bring it right up. If I wasn't sure I could uh, bring up all of my accounts and pick them from down here. But 115, that was it. Then I hit my tab key, goes to my debits field right here. And let's say that office supplies, I bought $350 of office supplies. And then I hit the tab, it goes to credits. I got no credits in there, it's just one. This is the, the first line of your journal entry, so to speak, of this uh, transaction entry. And let's say we've got paper and toner. Okay, that's my explanation. I go tab. Now, I don't need to put anything in the name field. We only use the name field when we're doing accounts payable or accounts receivable where we have a client or we have a vendor involved. So I go tab. Comes to our next screen here. And let's say that I do some equipment. Okay, let's see what I got here. I'll just do a one and that'll bring up all my assets. Uh, prepaid, ah, we'll do prepaid rent. Ah, I got office equipment right there. We could do that. Office equipment. That makes sense. Now you notice it defaulted to a credit of 350 because it will always keep the transaction in balance. But we have another debit entry to do here. Let's say that we bought a, a, a copier for $325. Tab, and now you see the credit's gone. 
and there's my office paper and toner okay and I can change this to then and, and copier tab I don't need a name tab partial payment of cash and partial on account so I've got cash that's going to be our checking account which is one 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 okay there's checking tab okay and let's say that I paid two hundred dollars in cash tab tab okay and no account name you know a name is needed over there but now we're going to do our on account thing this is going to be accounts payable which is a 200 account there's accounts payable tab okay 475 tab tab now watch what happens I'm going to try to save this without entering a uh, vendor name there I'm gonna go save and it tells me here the following errors have occurred when you use accounts payable you must choose a vendor in the name field okay so I come back here to accounts payable and I'm gonna go I've already I've set up some vendors here I'll pull this down so there's office max right there I already set these up I can set up new ones on the fly in here but it's set up right here so there we go tab now our journal entry is in balance and I can save and go to my next one okay save and new save that journal entry and you notice here we went from journal entry 4 to journal entry 5 it automatically increments up here so you have to watch that if you're skipping around you want to always verify you've got the right journal entry reference there okay so that is an example of entering a journal entry and also a journal entry that involved a vendor now after you've entered a lot of journal entries you want to go see a report that shows you in a, a general journal page so hold on one second and we'll go right there let's go over to our instruction page make sure I'm there okay we got that we'll go to the bottom because that's where I have that have an, ah, here's our general journal right here so we go after you have entered a bunch of journal entries we want to do a general journal report okay we can X in the upper right to get out of the journal entry screen so I come back alt tab I can come out here I can exit out right there boom now I'm back in my home screen come back to instructions okay and then I click on reports on the left all reports accountant reports and then the journal okay so I come over here to reports all reports and then I scroll down come on accountant reports and there's the journal right there I click on the journal okay now it's going to come up with with a journal that the date range is not necessarily the one that we want in your case you want June 1st to June 30th 2012 this one here I'm doing November 1st 2013 to I'll go ahead and use this little guy November 30th 2013 and then I have to click on run report okay that'll go through and grab all the date the data within that range and there is my general journal report with all my journal entries that I've entered here okay now the thing in the assignment I've mentioned here is that um, once we've created the assignment we want to memorize the, re the journal report this is part of the assignment when I come in to correct your project I want to have all the reports memorized and available for me to use they're convenient for you also so you're going to click on save customizations okay so we'll come back here save customizations okay it brings up this screen I'm doing uh, journal space dash space June so you know that it's a June date range we don't enter anything here or check any boxes we just say okay now I've already created that so I'm just going to replace it again okay so there we go now I've memorized this journal report now I can print it get around to your submission of the project you would print it if you're print you're submitting on paper and you would email it if you're submitting by email so just to wrap up here let's see whenever you want to go see your journal you can come over click on reports and now instead of all reports you go to my custom reports you click on that and here's all the reports that you've memorized you click on the June journal 
and boom, there it comes right there. And that's what I want to do when I come in and review your project. Just go through your memorized reports, jump to it, take a look at your formats and your content, and score it from there. So there you are, students. There you know how to make journal entries in QuickBooks. Thank you very much.